In this video, I'm going to go over exam number three, set A. There are 22 problems. I'm going to go over 22 problems under 30 minutes. Problem number one has to do with mechanics. Two vectors given, vector A, which is 32 Newton, and vector B, really, vector B is uh, 20 Newton and 120 degree angle, all right? So what do we want to find? Number one is the linear scale. What do we try to find? Linear scale for this problem. So 32 Newton, so I'm gonna put 32 Newton over here on the top. So 32 Newton, and I'm gonna over here put the centimeter. So 32 Newton is about eight centimeters. Eight centimeters. So centimeter, centimeter cancel, it goes to 32, four. So the answer would be one centimeter is equal to four Newton plus minus 0 0.2. This is called measurement and this is called error. Problem number two, I want you to draw the resultant. To draw the resultant, you have to use the protractor. So when you use the protractor, you're gonna be, a protractor is uh, gonna allow you to draw a line like this with 60 degree angle and draw a line like this with also 60 degree angle okay if you do that then you'd be able to draw a resultant by just connecting this two point all right and now this is answer to problem number two this is the resultant Okay, number three, what are you going to try to find is the size of this resultant. Number three is just the size. Size is the resultant. How can we find the size? You can use the ruler to find the size. And the ruler tells us this is seven centimeter. Seven centimeter, and we know how to convert it to Newton. So, centimeter and Newton. One centimeter is four Newton, centimeter, centimeter cancel. So we have 28 Newton. This is one way you can do it. The other way you can use the parallelogram, law of parallelogram. So resultant square is equal to P square plus Q square plus two P Q cosine theta. So R square is equal to P square is uh, of course um, 32 square plus Q square 20 square plus two 32 20 and cosine 120. So R is 28 um, Newton. Okay, all right, great. Um, problem number four, so you have a normal line and uh, you have incident ray. So I have an incident ray. This is an incident ray, okay. So when the incident ray hit the medium so we're going to call medium n1 and we're going to call medium n2 okay it's going to go to n2 if it, it does go to n2 we're going to call it uh, angle of refraction if it does go to the same medium and then we're going to call it the angle this is angle of incident and then we're going to call it angle of reflection the problem in this problem i ask you to show me the angle of reflection so angle of reflection reflection is equal to angle of incident okay so what is angle of incident it's 40 degree angle so this is 40 degree angle if this is 40 degree this must be 40 degree so i'm going to say 40 degree plus minus 2 okay that's the problem number of course four so let's go over problem number five so for example if i ask you to find the current and then the current has two formula the current is q over t and the current is v i r so the current is v over r okay now if i give you two things if i give you the um, current five amps and uh, the time takes is 36 seconds you're probably gonna have to use this formula to find the Q. 
So the Q has to be current times T. So current is five, uh, five amps and times 36 second. And this is 180 Coulomb. Okay. That takes us problem number six. For example, if I have a spring like this, the spring is compressed. That means the spring um, has, and this spring is, let's say this spring. This spring is zero, so this spring has potential energy zero. This spring is compressed, so this spring has some potential energy. Potential energy is greater than zero because this spring has uh, this spring is compressed, okay? Compressed. So, how much compressed it is? Uh, uh, the potential energy depends on how much compressed it is. Okay, now let's see. Let's find the potential energy of this spring. This spring has no potential energy. So, if I give you few things, if I give you K is 100, and potential energy is, let's say, 2 Joule, all right? What do you want to find? You want to find this X, all right? This would be the x. So, how much is this x? Let's find it out. Okay. Um, let's find it out. Okay. So, p is equal to half k, uh, p is equal to half uh, k x squared. So, then x squared is 2 p e over k. So, x squared is 2 times 2 over 100. So, x is 0 0.2 meter. So, this is 0 0.2 meter. Right. Okay. Is that right? Good. Problem number 7. Problem number 7 comes from, again, waves. So, problem number 7 is also a wave problem. So, if I have a here and I have medium x and this is a normal and if you have ray of inc ray uh, incident ray come this way and the incident ray incident ray is a 45 degree and the refracted ray is 29 degree i want to find the x all right i want to find the x okay so we're going to have to find use the snell's law what does snell's law tells us n1 sine theta 1 is equal to n2 sine theta 2. n1 for the year is 1, the index of refraction, sine theta for incident is 45 degree, is equal to n2, of course, the n2 is the x, and sine theta 2, the theta 2 is 29. So, all right, so what are you going to try to find? x is equal to sine 45 degree and sine 29 degree. 1.45 uh, so 1.45 so index of refraction is 1.45 now go over problem number 8 so the problem number 8 has to do with the energy the energy is HF okay energy is HF um, let, let's say you have only the lambda given lambda is 488 nanometer and I want you to find the energy. How can you find it? Okay. One thing you know that velocity is lambda times uh, frequency. Velocity C is lambda times frequency. So then the frequency is C over lambda. So replace that frequency with C over lambda. Okay. So let's do that. So E is equal to H C over lambda. So E is equal to 6.63 .6 times 10 to 34, 3 times 10 to 8 our lambda what is lambda of course lambda is 488 this is nanometer make it meter so 10 raised to negative 9 um, so e is equal to 4 times 10 raised to uh, negative 17 um, plus negative 2 so negative 19 joule okay so that is problem number 8 problem number 9 10 and 11 are uh, the same problem. Nine to you, I give you a bulb. Uh, so in the bulb there is a f uh, the tungsten, there is a filament. So the length is let's say uh, length is 0.22 meter, 
And what, what else I can give you? Um, I can give you, okay, with this, I wanted to find the cross-sectional area. So the cross-sectional area would be, would be this. This, this is the cross-sectional area. All right, so the resistance is, so let me give you also resistance. Resistance is less than 19 ohms L over, a cross-sectional area is rho L over resistance. Uh, no, resistance is rho L over area. So, area is rho L over resistance. So, uh, the, the rho for the tungsten is 5.6 times 10 raised to negative 8. Uh, so, 5.6 times 10 raised to negative 8 is uh, 0.22 and uh, uh, the resistance is 19. So, area is 6.5 times 10 raised to negative 10 square meter. That is 9. So, now we are going to solve 10. The 10 is what happened to the resistance if the temperature go up. If the temperature go up, resistance also go up. Why? Let me give you an example. So, let us give you an example here. So, there is a circuit. So, this is a circuit. All right. So, there is some resistance. All right. This is made of wire and wire made of atoms. And electrons carry the charges. This is small electrons. If temperature go up, if the temperature go up, then what happened? The atoms, the atoms move fast. Atom move faster. If atom move faster, then when electron move inside the atom, they collide with the atoms increasing the collision that means there is much resistance. If on the other hand temperature go down then atoms uh, atoms uh, do not move fast they move slow. If the temperature goes to 0, 0 degree Kelvin then atoms sit down on a couch they take rest. They sit down on the couch and they watch TV they take rest. If that is the case, atoms do not move, then when electron moves, they do not collide with the atoms. As a result, there would be no resistance. That would be a superconductor, meaning that there would be no resistance. So, if the temperature is small, then resistance is also small. If temperature is 0, this temperature is 0, then resistance is also 0. Okay, very nice. Uh, and then number 11, we have to find the power. Power is V square over R. All right, so, power V square would be, what is the V square given? V square is uh, 120, 120 square over 240. So, power is 60 watt. All right. Okay, now we are going to solve problem number 12, 13 and 14. So, problem 12, 13 and 14, problem number 12 to 14, problem number 12 to 14 has to do with the mechanics. So, what I have is basically wood over wood, this is also made of wood. Okay. So, what happened? This is constant velocity, how do I know? By making the same arrow. Okay. Uh, this is constant velocity. Okay, let's show you it is constant velocity. That means that the arrow are the same in magnitude. Arrow are the same in magnitude. Arrow are the same in magnitude. All the arrow are same in magnitude, making it constant velocity. Okay, very good. What causes the constant velocity? Okay, there is applied force. Applied force, let's say, is 150 Newton. Okay, so so now number thirteen is number twelve. Number thirteen is uh, what is force of friction? Force of friction as a result 
uh, this is just uh, for fx, which is 130 Newton. So what we need to find, we need to find the normal force. So the normal force is number 14 is normal force. Normal force is mu k fn. So fn would be ff over mu k. ff is 130 and mu k for wood and wood is 0 0.3 if it is moving. So 430 Newton. All right. So okay. All right, and that takes us problem 15, 16, 17, and 18. So that takes us problem 15, 16, 17, and 18. So problem 15 to 18. Problem 15 to 18 is acceleration, pro, um, centripetal acceleration. So let's say you are moving uh, on a on a car in a road that is almost circular like this. Okay, very good. Now this road has some centripetal force. Centripetal force is not caused by g m1 m2 over r square. This is caused by force of friction, of course. And and the radius is 45. How much is it? 45 meter. Radius is 45 meter, and this is uh, centripetal acceleration is 3.2 meter per second square. And this guy is 1500 kilograms. So what we need to know, number one, is what would be the velocity. So to find the velocity is uh, acceleration is v square over r. So velocity is a r. So velocity is a is 3.2 r is 45. So velocity is 12 meter per second. Number two, we need to find the centripetal force. Not not number two, number 16. This is 15. 16 centripetal force. Centripetal force is m is c. m is 1500 and c is 3.2. So 4800 newton. Number 17. We need to see what causes the centripetal acceleration, centripetal force. What causes the centripetal force? Okay, only the force of friction. This caused by force of friction. If there is no force of friction, the car won't be able to make it. Uh, car, car won't be able to make it. Uh, so the car won't be able to move around. Move around. All right. So it's gonna just slip and fall. Number 18, we want to find um, the centripetal force if velocity go down. If velocity go down, the centripetal force also go down because centripetal force is approximately v squared. All right, good. 19 is very simple. Uh, you have a car, one, two, three, All right, so this is you, this is you, this is Tesla, this is you, this is Tesla, this is you, this is Tesla, this is you. All right, here is the red light. You are six meters behind than the Tesla. Tesla is accelerating four meter per second square. You are moving with constant velocity. Okay, constant velocity, which is eight meter per second. Here you meet Tesla. Here Tesla meet you. Here you pass Tesla, not meet. Here Tesla pass you. I want you to find the position function here. Uh, velocity function here. Acceleration function here, position function here, velocity function here, acceleration function here. I want you to do over here a few things. I want you to find the D, T, V, U, V, Tesla, D, T, V, U, V, Tesla. Also, I want you to draw some 
graph this is distance versus time this is velocity versus time so the tesla would be this is u and this would be tesla so i wanted to find the point over here so the point over here is 0 comma negative 6 point over here okay let's find the time first how can we find the time so this information is going to help us and this information is going to help us so d is equal to vat d is equal to x plus vat plus half at square and d is equal to x plus vat plus half at square so acceleration is zero because constant velocity so d is negative 6 plus 80 d is this is our reference frame 0 comma 0 so x is 0 this is 0 half a is 4 t square so d is 2 t square all right so now right here when u pass tesla 2 t square is equal to negative 6 plus 80 so then 2 t square minus 8t plus 6 is equal to 0. So 2t squared minus 6t minus 2t plus 6 is equal to 0. So 2t t minus 3 minus 2t minus 3. So 2t minus 2 is equal to 0. So t is equal to 1. So t minus 3 is equal to 0. So t is equal to 3. So t is equal to 1. t is equal to 3. All right, so now we're going to find the distance, but before distance, we want to write the position function. Position function is uh, 8t minus 6, 8t minus 6, and position function is uh, uh, 2t squared. All right, so the point over here, co coordinate over here is, this is 1, 1 comma 2. The coordinate over here, this is 3, so 3 comma 18. All right, now we want to convert it to the velocity versus time graph. Uh, so this is would be the velocity of Tesla. I'm sorry, velocity of u. You want to find the position function. This is velocity of Tesla. Velocity of Tesla. Tesla, I want you to find the position function. Okay, so to find the position function, you have to write Vf is equal to Va plus At. Uh, Tesla's initial velocity is 0. Tesla's acceleration is 4, 4 t. So 4 t. U, your initial velocity is 8. Your acceleration is 0. So the just 8. Okay, we already find the time. So this is 1, this is 3. All right. I want to find the coordinate over here. So when Tesla pass u, uh, u pass Tesla, u pass Tesla, when Tesla pass u, when u pass Tesla, number one for Tesla, for Tesla is going to be one comma four. For u is going to be one comma eight. For Tesla, when Tesla pass u, for Tesla is going to be 3 comma 12. For u, it's going to be 3 comma 8. All right. So now we should be able to fill it out. And the distance, uh, this one, this this distance would be this distance over here. Let's draw. It. Let's let's shade it. This distance is 18. So this distance is 18. So this distance is distance over here. Um, here and here and here and this this distance. So this distance is bh half bh. So what is it? Half, half bh. So half b is one. 
A C is eight. This is four. Half of B H. So this is four. This is this is four meter. This is four meter. This is not eighteen. This is four. the two. So half one. Oh, this is not good. So let's see. So this is would be half B H. So half B is one and H is four two. So this has to be two meters. Uh, velocity for u would be how much velocity for u? I can I can find the red one. Red one would be b h. B would be one and h would be eight. So eight, eight minus six would be two. So it's two. Uh, velocity for u would be velocity for u would be eight. Velocity for Tesla would be four meter per second. Now let's do the other one distance so let's find the distance now the distance would be this one all right so now we don't need this all right okay now the distance is this all right so the distance would be what half a bh so half a bh would be what half B is how much? 3. H is how much? 12. 6. 18. So this is 18. V y would be, V u would be 8 meter per second. This is meter and this is second. And V Tesla would be, I don't know, 12. Right? 12 meter per second. All right. So hopefully you understand this problem. Very important problem. All right. Now, when Tesla pass u, for u, that would be when Tesla pass u for u that would be this. This is Tesla pass u for u. Tesla pass u and this is for u. U. And when Tesla pass u for Tesla that would be this. Okay. 